This is a Skywatcher short tube uh, uh, 80 millimeter telescope, refractor telescope. And uh, is it is better than the Orion version, I'm surprised. Orion has a lot of, uh, uh, not only chromatic aberration, Orion, I mean this one, this one. They should be the same, and uh, Orion is actually the premium brand. But it doesn't. It has a chromatic aberration. Beside that, it has a, a spherical aberration. Surprise, surprise. But this one, which is a Skywatcher, doesn't have any of that. So let's have a look. So that is our famous Coke can. You see it in my, a lot of my videos, telescope videos. This has been there for years now. And this is a wide field uh, plus of a uh, cheap eyepiece. Doesn't have even a brand name. But it's one of my best PL 40 millimeter. I got it, I think, from for 10 pounds from auction site. So a really good eyepiece. Probably one of my best. I have other eyepieces. I have mead, I have a um, you know, name it, I have. This one gets a lot of use because it's such a wide field of view. It makes the telescope really worthwhile. It gives more than three degrees, maybe four degrees of the field of view. The Orion belt easily fits into this. Easily you can target, find the target with this eyepiece and this telescope. And for the comparison, we have a Pepsi. So we look through the uh, eyepiece to the uh, Coke. Now we have a Pepsi here to compare. That's not bigger than this. So 80 millimeter is the, I think, is a crucial size that makes a difference between a refractor and a refractor. Orion, I look to the with the Orion to the Jupiter, 80 millimeter Orion. It was just a blob messy, you could not see really, chromatic aberration was really bad, beside the spherical aberration, which actually ruined the picture. And I look to Jupiter with this, which is the mid ETX 90mm, and it was really good. With this one also, I had a very good one. I must say this one was really close to, they both are close. This is the ETX 125, and this is ETX 90. Both were very good. This is a hot day. You can see I have now uh, used this uh, bracket, camera bracket, with my mobile phone. And I'm focusing uh, and looking at the different things in the garden. So I'm bringing to focus different objects. I'm out of focus. Now I'm on in the focus. Let me turn it toward the little bit toward the different position as you can see you can easily f see the whole field of view I hope you can notice that I can see the whole field of view let me just uh, put it here I think this is easier than the other one that I had okay I have seen some flowers here which I will try to capture uh, in focus I can even zoom with my hand, you know, I don't need to zoom uh, with anything else but just my hands and the camera because it's a practically mobile phone camera. And let me see a little bit higher in the sky. Okay, that's a good shot of a few flowers which are not opened. So I'm trying to focus on them.
Let me exit the uh, yeah, reduce the zoom. Okay, I'm go now going to the sky just to see if I can focus on any purple fringing. Mm, you be the judge. Do you see any purple fringing? I go out of the focus, out of the focus. This is a sky washer, by the way, it, it was, star, was star travel. AT millimeter. So it's practically has a good amount of the aberration. But with this image you can see that there is not much actually purple fringing. And uh, when you see a dark object like this branch against the brightness of the sky, you should see the purple fringing at least out of the focus. And I don't see any of that. So this camera does really well. And uh, and the mount, of course. I can move the field of view slightly, just to see what can I achieve. Let me see. Let me try this. Okay, I'm moving now. As you see, I'm moving over the, hovering over the uh, telescope eyepiece, and I can move in this other direction by turning this one. As you can see. I think this mount is really, this uh, camera mount is really good. Works really well with my mobile phone, although the pressing of the camera bracket is actually on the on off button. But it does well. I'm focusing and I'm going out of focus again. So let me see a few of these flowers. I've keep the focus on them. Yeah, those were are not opened. I shift the image. Okay, there is at the center a few nice flowers. They have not opened, but I'm using a Dobsonian mount, which is for the Skywatcher Virtuoso. Uh, uh, four inch one. As you can see, it works really well. When I'm zooming, I can actually have the full full frame picture. So I suppose if it was the moon, I could actually zoom as if I was zooming on the craters. Just at the very high um, focus, high, high uh, magnification with the camera digital, uh, digitally uh, magnifying, I can see some tiny red bits, I'm not sure, around the flowers in the lower part of the image. Or if you are looking like that, is probably to the right of the image around the flowers. Right? But beyond that, when you are in the normal zoom, you don't see that, you don't notice that at all. So this this is really good. This is really good. This is what I want. And this is the camera setup uh, adapter, the eyepiece. As you can see, that's the flower we were looking at. And this is a telescope, a sky watcher telescope. So all the setting works on this. Brilliant. And this is of course the sky watcher we chose, so this Newtonian. This Newtonian. This is the stand for this. So works well. Okay, as you can see I just loosen up this and it, uh, the whole thing comes up the eyepiece the whole weight is on this uh, ball bearing here and with the friction it works of course you can use it with any other method if you have a German equatorial mount or anything the same thing applies here it just works and uh, yeah good overall picture and video capturing system